On April 28th of 2016, as I approached the end of my junior year in college, my world was turned upside down. I was diagnosed with stage 3 Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, my whole life, I have lived with the biggest smile on my face. I wore happiness so easily. Coming to college was no different. I became involved in the communication studies department. I got a job on campus. I made the best group of friends. I fell in love and discovered what a really decent cup of coffee tasted like. So finding out I had cancer was never part of the plan. My road had taken such an unexpected and sharp turn. In fact, it had become completely unpaved. In one brief moment, in one phone call, I discovered that I may never get to walk down the aisle. I may never get to finally move out of Texas. I may never get to have children or even graduate. Now, I know that I'm not alone in this foggy state of being. Whether you've encountered cancer or not, we have all faced trauma, some kind of upside down. Whether that be divorce, heartbreak, loss, life takes unexpected turns and twists that we never see coming. In the face of these sorts of monsters, our most raw and vulnerable state is revealed and at risk. Our idea of love, our purpose in life, who we think we are, our identity, is turned on its head. So how do we survive? How do we come out of the darkness with our spirit and our identity still intact? In my case, some of you might say, six months of aggressive chemotherapy, and you wouldn't necessarily be wrong. Poison infiltrated my veins, killing good and bad cells. Clearly, I survived, right? But cancer wasn't my only demon. Finding out I was sick had put a knot in my chest. I kept telling people I'm okay. I found every joke in the book to fight through the dense air I was having difficulty swallowing. No one could see that I was existing in the non-existent. No one could tell that I was grasping to straws, trying to hold it all back. Hold back the tears, the bile, the despair, the heartache, all of it. I felt like no one could truly see me. They couldn't hear me or feel me. The world had become bleak. Finding out I was sick... I was unable to lead the life I once had. I ended up turning to Netflix. It was then that I discovered the Netflix series Stranger Things. And for those of you that have not yet watched Stranger Things, for some insane reason, think Goonies meets Poltergeist. It's about a group of young boys searching for their friend Will who's gone mysteriously missing. It features this strange, heroic little girl with a buzz cut and special powers. Her name is Eleven. And this violent, giant, terrifying monster that the boys call the Demigorgon. Strangely enough, as a young woman with cancer, this is what I could best relate to. I watched in amazement as the demigorgon dragged people into this strange abyss, this other side, this other dimension, the upside down. This place where people had difficulty breathing, where they resorted to communicating through strung lights and lamps because words were not registering with people in the real world. I watched as Will hid in his fort in the Upside Down, and if someone didn't come save him soon, the Demigorgon was going to eat him. And if the Demigorgon didn't eat him, he was going to suffocate in this Upside Down. I was in awe. One, because for the first time ever, due to this strange, heroic little girl with a buzz cut, being bald was kind of cool in the year that I had to be. And second, because this upside down 
I was there. This story had captured exactly how I felt art had done that for me. But trying to explain that to someone, to invite them into my upside down, was an endeavor I wasn't sure how I could or should approach. I couldn't find the words to best articulate how I was feeling. I didn't know how to ask for help. And if I didn't figure out how to express myself soon, the demigorgon, my cancer, was going to swallow me whole. And if it didn't, I felt like I was going to suffocate. Will had used electricity to communicate, to give clues of his existence, but what could I do? I thought about creating the next Netflix hit series, but it wasn't really in the budget, nor did I have the connections yet. Thankfully, though, I discovered that expressive writing was my ladder out of the darkness. It was my way of asking for help. It was my way of telling my community what I needed and what I most certainly did not need. Through expressive writing, I was finally able to express the pain, the despair, and the anger that was bubbling beneath the surface of every, I'm okay. And I'd always loved writing, but I viewed it as a hobby, not as a tactic for survival. And as soon as I started writing, it felt like someone had unlocked my chest, finally allowing it to expand. The floodgates had opened, and not in the violent way I'd imagined they would. The healing started then, and while it may not have been graceful, it created some beautiful, tangible art. Art does that. It heals in ways that no chemotherapy, that no medication or I'm sorry is capable of. But how is this? How can art and science come together in this way? Researchers have found that expressive writing has helped strengthen relationships between individuals. It's helped victims of PTSD cope, and it's even helped patients of chronic illnesses such as asthma and arthritis. And if we take a close look at some of our most celebrated artists, we may see un an underlying theme of trauma. And I'm not saying that trauma is necessary in creating good art. What I'm saying is that we all have our demons. It's what we do with them that can create something beautiful. Just like moons and like suns, with a certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. In Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise, she shows the beauty that can come from the storm. Through poetry, she rose. She rose higher and higher out of the oppression, the sexual abuse, and the inequality. And I can't really say what Maya Angelou would think about the show Stranger Things, of Will and his friends, of Eleven. But there's a few things I feel certain in assuming. I think she would think it was kind of cool that a strange little girl saves the day. And I think that she would see the upside down in its horror, its suffocation, and I think she'd be able to relate too. I mean, I think we all can, right? We are always bound to some kind of monster in the world. But when we turn to what we love most, what inspires us, we might have a chance of surviving them. And if we share our story, we might even help someone else. When I first started blogging, I was shocked by the uproar of responses I received. I got the usual condolences, the people from high school that appeared saying they never forgot about me. But I was most surprised by the messages I received saying, me too, and thank you, from people that didn't even have cancer, but they were dealing with some kind of trauma and my words had helped them somehow. Now, expressive writing was more than just me throwing my story into the void. I had helped individuals, maybe even whole communities of people. I discovered that my story was simply part of a constellation of stories. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't write. And maybe you don't. 
and you don't have to. Expressive art can be a many number of things. For example, my mother's is gardening. She spends hours outside creating beauty out of dirt. Maybe yours is sewing. Maybe it's building. Maybe it's a sport or photography or dancing. It can be a many number of things. Anything that brings out that underlying emotion that is screaming to be let out. Whatever it is, dive into it. Keep your head above the water and reclaim the air that was so selfishly stolen from you. Grab onto the lifeboat that has always been there. Art. The following is an excerpt from a blog I wrote halfway through my treatments. It's titled The Upside Down. I know what three months of ABBD chemo does to a person's body. I know what it's like to have nightmares about a building, nightmares about a chair, about medicine, faces. I know what it's like to live in the upside down. You see, cancer had taken my breath away. It had dragged me into the upside down. But when I shared my story with someone, I found air again. I found that my circumstances, my demigorgon was not unique. Your circumstances, your demigorgon, no matter how menacing and terrifying it may be, it is not unique. The person to your right and to your left may be facing one this very minute. Maybe your demigorgon is divorce. Maybe it's a really bad breakup. Maybe you're a victim of sexual abuse. Maybe it's illness. I'm only 22, and I have so much left to learn. Luckily, I get the chance to. I have my community, my unyielding belief in love, and my art to thank for that. So today, I challenge you. As a stage three cancer survivor, writer, student, feminist, and performer, I challenge you to not be afraid of love, to never hold yourself back from it, because like the ocean, looking into its dark depths, the unknown is scary. But when we dare to dive just beneath the surface, we are bound to find the world's most beautiful phenomenons. I challenge you to watch Stranger Things if you have not already. I challenge you to express yourself, to find your art, find your voice, put pen to paper. I challenge you to do more than just use your voice. I dare you to share it. Thank you.